All right. Happy to be joined by a very talented individual, someone I've gotten to know and, and happy to call a, a friend. He's uh I don't know what order I should put these in. Uh, he's a, a, a father, a hobbyist, a rapper, a teacher. I probably left something out. Uh, Mr. K-Dub himself. Kyle, welcome to Sports Card Nation. I appreciate you having me on, man. This is awesome. It's an honor. Yeah, I, well, I'm glad. I probably, like I told you off the air, I, I should have had you on sooner, but, uh, you know, sometimes things get, uh, you know, get crazy. But uh, here you are, and uh, uh, glad to have you. Better late than than ever, as they say. And, uh, uh, you know, hobby wise, what, you know, what do you collect? What what piques your interest? You know, uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll probably talk a little bit about uh, kind of the story of my hobby, but uh, growing up, you know, I got into cards and in kind of that middle school era and I was a big Bulls fan. Uh, so it was all MJ all the time. Um, but then kind of when I when I kind of got out of the hobby um, is when I really started, you know, finding some love for my favorite NFL team, which is the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, so that is my I would say my PC is the Minnesota Vikings, uh, young to old, uh, vintage to uh, new age stuff. Uh, I love it all. And then uh, I got a couple other little side PCs. Uh, Cooper Cup, he went to uh, Eastern Washington University. I was collecting Cooper Cup before he was a Super Bowl MVP, just so you know. <laughs> um, I, I met him when I was in uh, at in Cheney at Eastern and uh, just an amazing dude. And so a lot of respect for him. He's actually one of the real reasons that I started collecting cards again was, you know, I wanted to start picking up stuff of him. Um and then uh, I, John Stockton is another Washington dude, so I like to pick up his cards. And then uh, I like to think of myself as the Bishop Sankey super PCer, uh, who is a former Spokane native, UW running back, Tennessee Titan, and finished his career with the Minnesota Vikings. So technically, he's part of my Vikings PC. <laughs> so I got to ask you, I mean, I know they just won the Super Bowl. I mean, I mean, a dream for you would probably be what? Cooper Cup? to the Vikings in, in some form or fashion. I mean, don't get my hopes up like that, man. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I think that would be incredible. Uh, unfortunately, the Vikings are kind of stacked at wide receiver right now, so I don't know that I'd want him to go to a team where he wouldn't get as many looks as he gets with the Rams. But Yeah, uh, just, they got a guy named Justin Jefferson and some other – uh, guy Adam Thielen is not, yeah. not too bad, but yeah, they're uh, okay. I mean, they're okay, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Cooper Cup, man, incredible year. Uh, I mean, legitimate could have won the MVP, uh, traditionally an MV, uh, quarterback award, uh, and it was again, but yeah, one of the greatest wide receivers seasons uh, in the history of the game, won the triple crown, uh, yep. uh in, in receiving, which for those that don't know, that's most catches, most yards, and most touchdowns. That yeah. doesn't happen. Even with some of the greats uh, mm -hmm. in that wide receiver position, very few lead all three stat lines, and, and yep. Cooper Cup did that this year. So you you, you picked a good guy, and by all accounts, uh, uh, everything I hear about him, uh, as great of a player he is, he's a, he's a great person uh, as well. So yeah, that's I'll, always I'll, nice to hear. I'll echo that, man. He is as great a person as he is a player. Um, the way I met Cooper Cup was I was doing youth ministry in in Cheney where Eastern's at. And uh, he came in and spoke just he was a star at Eastern and we were trying to get some athletes to come in. And we asked him and he came in and talked and hung out with middle school and high school kids for the whole night. Um, so just and he's just a great guy. So, yeah, good dude to collect and just yeah. a good dude. Around. Man, there's an example, right? Good things happen to, to good people. and Absolutely. Uh, and and he's one of the hardest workers I've ever met. So, yeah, now you got to get him to try to get him to come back and show up when he gets a Super Bowl ring. Yeah, there that, you go. Yeah. Show that thing off to the kids. I'm sure they'll, <laughs> I'm sure they'll want to put that on and, and watch it swim around their, uh, uh, their fingers. But, uh, no, oh, yeah. that, that, that's awesome. And it's good. It's, it's nice. You know, it's always good when you hear someone that's not just talented, but a uh, good person to, uh, to yeah. boot. So, absolutely. So I got to ask you, you, you're from the Washington area. How does, you know, you would all, all assume, you know, Seahawks, but how the Vikings? Was it Was it a particular player? Uh, it, was, it was actually my dad. Uh, my dad yeah. grew up in Minnesota in the 70s when the Vikings were it, you know, four Super Bowls. They didn't yeah. win any, but they were it, Sam and Fran, the Purple People Leaders. And when I was in fourth grade and all my buddies were getting their cool – 
you know, starter jackets of the Bulls and the Tar Heels and the Cowboys. My dad bought me a purple Minnesota Vikings jacket and the rest is history. Been disappointed ever since. So I owe it 100% to my dad. Yeah, well, at least you're 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 uh, loyal. You'd have a jump ship, and uh, you know they You know, I I like Mike Zimmer. I don't know what. Well, now he's gone. Yeah. Uh, so, but uh, you know, I thought he was going to get it done, but uh, they got they got players. Maybe a maybe a new voice in the locker room is is what they need. We'll we'll see it. Uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, they're not the worst team, uh, you know. And they're 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 always seem to be in the mix. You know what they, I mean? That's they that's, always they always seem to find a way to break my heart. So <laughs> that's what I appreciate about them. So I, I yeah. all, all the things you're saying is true. They got a great offense. I, I really like this new coach. I think he's going to be offensive minded, but they're they're yeah. going to disappoint. It's going to happen, John. One hundred percent. Well, know. use re- well, well. Let's say let's hope you're using reverse psychology. If I, you, well, kind of, you think that, and then maybe <laughs> the opposite uh, will so eventually uh, have to happen. So, well, they got a new voice. If that's you know, all it takes. Okay, they'll they'll yeah. never be good. I mean, that, I'm, <laughs> that, I'm that in on the Vikings. I will well, really listen, you you could be a Steeler fan like me, and uh, we now we're we're searching for the uh, the next quarterback, and I don't know how that's gonna uh, end. We'll see, but uh, you know, they just they the Steelers like to make the playoffs and then just get blown out and uh, and go golfing. So, but you got your moments with the Steelers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, to- I can't I can't complain. Yeah, no. we we've got a. Uh, but recent trends are haven't been haven't very been true. Great. Very so, true. So we're kind of we're we're in the similar boat uh, with the <laughs> two teams uh, uh, we we root for. Absolutely. So you know, one thing I love about you is is your positivity, man. It's 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 in, you know it's contagious. Uh, it's genuine. Uh, you know, sometimes people you know do things and and it's more for show. Or, but uh, you know, you walk, you talk, as they say. I, mm. I love it. I, I try to interact as much as I can uh, with that. You've done, you know, speaking of, of rapping, you've you've done, you know, hobby raps, positive, where you incorporated uh, other people, including myself, in For that, sure. and uh, as a, as a cooperative effort, it, it, it's awesome stuff. Where were you always like that, a positive person, or is that something that? you know, as you've gotten older that you've, you, you've kind of honed in on, or, or is it something that was instilled at you, in you at an earlier age? Yeah. You know, I think, I think I've always been an optimist. You know, I've always tried to look at things on the positive side. I've always tried to see the glass is always half full. Um, you know, growing up, I didn't have everything that I wanted, uh, you know, but I had enough and, uh, I always tried to kind of just take that and go. And, uh, I think that positivity is something we all have ingrained inside of us. And, you know, some of that goes back to just my faith piece that I think we're all created uh, as good. And I think there's good in all of us. Um, And so I just try to live that example and be that example of, of good and hope and happiness. And, you know, as well as I know, there's far more negative in the world than positive. And if I can skip, tip the scale just a little bit, uh, by all means, you know, I want to do that. So, well, you don't need me to tell you this. You, you're doing a great job. And, and the fact that you incorporate other people and kind of that stuff, you know, you, one person turns into two people, turns into four yep. people. You get the gist of where I'm going here. That stuff's important. And like you said, there's a, there is negativity in the hobby. 99% of the hobby is good, good things and good people. You have the one percent, but that one percent likes to likes to scream and yell loud, and talk yep. real loud. And uh, you know, it, it's up to the good folks to sort of try to drown that out with positivity as as much as you can. Uh, I learned, you know, even uh, uh, you're big on Twitter, which is is where I pretty much call home base uh, as well. And you know, if you if you want to find that bad stuff, it's not hard to find. Yep. And you know, three hours later, you lost all that time and you're, you know, mm-hmm. better to show for. It. And uh, I'm not saying I've never done it, it, but it's those few times I did. I'm like, I can't get that three hours back. It's gone. And Absolutely. and I don't feel good about anything that happened in that three hours. It wasn't like it was a, a productive three hours. So you learn, like, I'm just not going to go 
down that rabbit hole. No one's going to win. Uh, it's going to make me kind of feel bad and yucky and dirty and want to take a shower mm. afterwards. And at time, whatever time I spent uh, in that process is gone and uh, can't go back and, and get it back. And, uh, you know, you learn and some people thrive. You know, I, I think you know this as well as I do, Kyle. Some some people love that stuff for, for their own reasons. And uh, uh, I've just uh, learned that it's it's to avoid it. Uh, what you do is is a, a good way to do that. Uh, you incorporate uh, again. I love how you incorporate, you know, not just positive yourself, but trying to get as many people kind of to the to pick up that torch and 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 go with you. And that that's a good thing. Well, talk about the hobby fam, the the hashtag and the group. Like, Absolutely. How, where, how did that come about? Well, I think you know. I know you say this. You know, the hobby is the people. And I think if you were, if I was to show you my collection, it's nothing special. I mean, I have a handful of boxes in a closet. It's not like I have, you know, I'm hiding, you know, $50,000 cards or Jordan rookies or trout autos. Like my collection is very simple, but my belief is the hobby is the community. The hobby is the people, the hobby is the interactions. And so that's the whole, whole message behind hashtag hobby family is just, we're all in this with the same focus collecting cards, but it's bigger than cards. It's uh, interacting with one another. It's connecting with one another. It's trading with one another. It's, you know, snagging a card for a buddy or getting a group together and racking a card for another friend. Um, you know, it's kind of that all for one, one for all mentality that we're all in this together. We're all silly dudes that collect cardboard with athletes faces on it. Um, but yeah. There's relationship there. There's community there. There's fellowship there. And so that's the heart behind, you know, the hobby family is just that we are a family. And as you said, there, there can be some, some bad eggs in a family, but you know, that doesn't mean they're not still part of the family and we can't still invite them in. And um, I've been amazed at the amount of people who have jumped in and joined in. I mean, even that hobby family rap video, I mean, there was a hundred people that sent videos in or sent me their logo for their breaker group. Or, I mean, it, it was really neat to see the community be a part of that. And that's my heart. You know, I'm not, I'm not the biggest collector. I can't snag the biggest cards. I can't get in every break, um, but I can interact and connect and build relationships. And that's what the hobby's all about. That's, that's and, the end of my, and, in my Ted talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, kudos to you, man. That's, you know, if for anyone that thinks that's easy to get a group of people together to do, send their video segments in, and it's oh. one thing for us to send them in to you. You gotta, you gotta piece that all together and edit it and, and put the uh, the music to the background, make it fit. And um, I mean, awesome job! Like I, I don't know how many times I watched that thing. Not, not for me. I'm, I, I, I ugly that thing up <laughs> with this mug. But just, yeah. just knowing what it was about and Absolutely. and the the premise behind it. And the work you did to, to put it together. I mean, for one sure. person to say, hey, let's do this and, you know, do it all basically yourself other than us doing our two to four second parts. Yeah. It's you doing all the behind the scenes, you know, grunt work, if you will, and, and putting yeah. that together uh, so we can can smile when we watch it. Uh, and, and like you said, have that camaraderie and, and good feelings, which is what the hobby uh, should be about and so and yeah. i know i know you, you're not the first time you've done that either it's not like a one time yeah deal. No, I, something you do and i tell people i love that stuff like i i really enjoy yeah. media and video editing and and i love doing the music stuff and so you know people ask me you know you know why i take it on and i actually enjoy it i enjoy being able to collect videos from people and try to think about the best way to put them together or how to match this a track with this video and um so a lot of that's just just my own hobby i guess my second hobby uh you know doing music and doing video editing stuff it's just it's fun so it is a little bit of a task though when you're getting dinged with <laughs> 50 to 100 emails in your day but I'll yeah. try my best uh, working so. well you do a great job and uh, Thank you. awesome stuff and you know going back to something you said with the cards about where your collection's at yeah, I think you summed it up well, though. It, it you enjoy they're yours. You enjoy them, um, and and the stories uh, behind them and why you collect, uh, who you collect. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, 
that that's all that matters, frankly. I mean, it's nice to have expensive cards. I get it. Um, but sometimes I think, uh, and I think I can be guilty of this at times myself. I think sometimes we put too much emphasis on that when, when yeah. it doesn't always need uh, to be the focus. So uh, I always say hobby your way, collect who you want. And let's Absolutely. be real, you know, your Cooper collection, uh, your Cooper Cup collection uh, just rose in value. For oh, that. yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> no. but, you know, but I'm, kid, I'm kidding with you. But, I, uh, you know, it, it's have it's it's as long as the hobby's fun to you, you enjoy it. That's yeah. that's that's the the number one. Uh, and and you, you know, Kyle, we can talk about people who have very expensive collections, but just seem to be grumpy and complaining all the time. So the dollar value of a collection uh, is only one small part of of the whole story. And like you said, the people behind the cards, how I acquired this, I traded yeah. with this, this person. Uh, you know, random act of kindness to, to yep. me. All those you can't put a price uh, on on those things, and frankly, you shouldn't put a price on those kind of stories. So uh, that's yeah. what it's uh, you know that's what it's about. So uh, well, awesome, uh, awesome there. Cards with stories. I mean, that's that's my whole PC right there, man. I mean, my probably my most expensive card in my collection is a Randy Moss rookie auto. And yeah. it's my favorite, it's my favorite card because not because it's my most expensive, but because Jimmy Mahan sent it to me as a rack. And yeah. so every time I see that card, I don't think, oh wow, this card's worth this much amount. I think, man, Jimmy thought enough of me to send me a card of my favorite Viking of all time. And so yeah. and that's yeah. that's it right there. I mean, but I got I got nickel and dime cards that have the same, give me the same feelings as well. You know, somebody sends me a Bishop Sankey auto that was two bucks in a bin. And I'm like, wow, yeah. this is awesome. Like somebody thought enough of me to send me this card or um cards with stories are my favorite. That's my whole PC. I, I my PC is every card yeah. has a story. Well, you're doing it right. You're doing it right. And uh you don't need again, you don't need me to tell you that. Um, <laughs> I'm trying, man. I'm trying. I appreciate it though. Yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> So I got into the teaching profession uh, this year. This is your profession. I, I can speak for myself. It's been, uh, and I'm still doing. I'm, I'm, I don't want to sound like I'm done, but uh, <laughs> it's just been an absolute uh, blast. It, to me, I, I don't want to speak for for you, Kyle. To me, it's not even. Doesn't even feel like. Uh, work. I've coached high school sports. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've been involved in youth sports, but this is my first real foray. Uh, my previous job, I was teaching uh, older people, like in, in the workforce, in an orientation <laughs> class for for a trucking company. So um, the, the classroom's not far in territory, but uh, for on a student level, uh, other than coaching sports, uh, the classroom sort of a different setting. But I took a lot of those experiences from those other experiences, whether it be my previous job or youth sports yeah. or high school sports and, and bring it to the classroom. It's, it, it's something I sh frankly should have did uh, sooner. Uh, yeah. That's a, a big regret. If I have one, uh, I plan on continuing to, to stay in it and uh, hope to, you know, when, when it's I'm retiring, I'm retiring from the teaching profession and, and not something else. But, yeah. uh, you know, I, I know uh, when I uh, took the job, I, I know when you, I, you know, I have a f few friends local here that are teachers that I talk to, but I also uh, talk to you and I want to thank you for, you know, uh, answering some questions and giving me uh, some encouragement. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun. And, and I know you'll know what I mean, you know, to, to have a job, like I say the, the word job because it's a job, uh, mm -hmm. you know, but I don't look at it as a job. Like I said, it's 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 really been a blast. But to have an impact uh, on young folks that kind of look up to you, I yeah. mean, you can't put a price on that. Um, it's it's to come home every day and, and know you you made a difference. I mean, that's there's a lot of jobs that don't don't give you that, that feeling. And so, right. you know, again, I want to thank you for, for, you know, answering some questions, giving me some encouragement, but talk about did it was teaching, you know, I got, I'm, I'm in, in it late. Uh, you were in it longer and sooner. Was that something you always kind of, that's what you wanted to do? 
You know, that, that is a great question. Um, no, it is not. Uh, I didn't have teaching on my radar until I was 19. Um, no one in my family is teachers. Uh, I don't have any education, you know, uh, relatives or anything like that. Um, but it, like you said, coaching kind of opened up this idea in my head that, that maybe teaching was an option in my life. I started coaching in 19, uh, uh, at the middle school in, in the town that I grew up for basketball. And I loved it, man. I loved working with kids. I loved teaching them their skills. I loved seeing them grow over the season. Kind of like you were saying those, you know, that short-term growth, um, that you see every day in your classroom. Um, and so then I, I just kind of went into that route that I'd, I'd like to be a teacher because I wanted to be a coach. And now I teach because I love to teach. I would, I would do it even if I couldn't coach. Um, it's the best gig on the planet, man. I, I love like exactly what you said. No day that I come to my job, do I feel like I do work? Um, because I, I love it. I enjoy it. Um, it's fun. It's challenging, you know, to try to think of ways to engage 12, 13, 14 year olds every single day. Um, it's, it's the best gig in the world, man. So. No, I, it, it, I can, I can second that. I know you have more mm -hmm. experience. I don't want to act like, you know, I, we're, we're all, you know, hey, we, every day we're all in the same boat, man. We no, I, I hear, I hear you. And, and, and that's the thing too, is every day going to work. I look forward to it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, a couple of weeks ago, I didn't feel great and I'm, I'm not calling out. I'm going to work, suck yep. it up. And, and, uh, you know, and, uh, went to work. If it was probably a previous job I had, I might, and I don't call out much anyway, but it might've yeah. been, it would have been a, a, an easier decision, uh, to maybe call out and take a day off. Uh, yeah, but, but you I, know, I, I, you know, like I know that when you're a teacher and you call out, you still have to do the work because you got to yeah. create plans for a sub. So it's not like, oh, I'm, I'm calling sick. No one's going to be at my desk. Nope. Somebody's going to be at my desk and they're going to expect, expect what the kids need. Yeah, to do. So. It, it's true. Kids get used to, you know, I'm an assistant, so I'm in the room with the teacher, but yeah, uh, he, he was out eight days. So I was the teacher yeah. for those eight days and oh, that's half cool. the yeah. Oh, it was, it was good. I tell you what, it was, it was good. And, uh, re, you know, a uh, real quick story. We, you know, uh, one of the young uh, ladies, uh, that, uh, is, is in one of the classes, uh, she does have a filter. She'll tell you how it is. <laughs> and, uh, kids. Yeah. That, and, uh, the, after that first day, now I've done it about 10 days, but after that first day, she came up to me at the end of a, a class, uh, the bell rung and, uh, you know, she goes, you know, Mr. Newman, uh, you didn't do as bad as I thought you were gonna. <laughs> and we're, <laughs> and uh, her name's Bella. I won't, you know, obviously I won't say her last name. Yeah. I said, you know, Be I said, Bella coming from you. Oh, that's a huge compliment. We both For laughed. Sure. And and that those little things like that, man, that just seem so, you know, someone else will be, oh, that's cute, but that'll make you day. Like that made my oh, day. Yeah. And and Absolutely. really it was early in the it was early in the day, and it sort of took the edge off the rest of the day. Because mm -hmm. my, my mindset was I just uh, impressed the the toughest critic in right. here. Uh, you know, it's it's all uphill, uh, you know, it's a uh, smooth sailing. Uh, Very from, good. from here and it's it's those little moments and just knowing that you know, you're important to you know people if you coach you know this uh Kyle mm -hmm. I've had kids come up to me you know and say things like hey you spend more time with me than my dad does and I want to mm -hmm. thank you coach and yep. you know I just say hey you know I appreciate you thanking me but you know I don't know all the ins and outs with your dad but you know try to to work on that he's still your dad and uh, yep. dads are important you know i'm i'm uh on one hand i'm sad that uh, maybe that relationship's not great on the other hand i'm glad i can kind of be there maybe sure. to fill in a, a small void but you know Absolutely. it's those moments like that that um you can't you know it, how many jobs you get though I'm, I'm i mean other jobs do but uh to know you really have that sort of an impact. And even if it's one person, it's a huge deal, but you know, this as well from teaching it's, it's a multiple uh, yep. young, young folks. And uh, uh, you, you know, regardless of what our pay is, it's, it's well worth it. And, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so my son, 
I get paid way more than I think I should get paid, man. I mean, yeah, you know, no, I won't go that far for me. But the, no, fact, they, the fact they told me to do this every day, I'm just like, cool. No, man. I know. I'm, I'm kidding. Cool. I'm kidding too. But yeah. uh, I'm, I'm happy to say my son Jordan is starting to. Uh, he's uh, started part time himself nice. at a different school as just kind of a, a watch him after school program. But uh, right. uh, the powers that be really like him, and they've That's mentioned cool. him being a teacher's assistant for, for next school year. So it might be, yeah. And, uh, he wasn't, he too, wasn't sure what he wanted to do. He's 22. Yep. And, uh, and maybe this, uh, he's really, uh, even talking to him when he comes home, uh, from work and, uh, telling the story similar to me, you can, you yeah. can tell the way he lights up that, uh, you for know, sure. it, it's, 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 it's sparked an interest and, uh, uh, he's a good kid, so I th- he'll if he wants to do it, he'll he'll be good at it. And I think I think he, you know, he's going from I'm not sure what I want to do to I think this is uh, an avenue I want to pursue. So uh, that's that'll great. Be, that'll I, I be wish good. him all the best, man. It's tell him tell him Kate up said it's the best gig on the planet. Yeah, no, I w- I will. So let's talk about that now. With your cards, do you interact? Do you intertwine your hobby at at all? Uh, with your students or do they collect or, or is that not really uh, been uh, possible? You know, where I'm, where I'm at in Washington, it's pretty rural, small town. Um, so there's not a big kind of sports card community. I do incorporate the music stuff. Um, yeah. You know, the hip hop stuff. We do do um, that stuff within the classroom. Um, but, but the collecting stuff really isn't, it just really isn't a part of the the culture here. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of foreign. I have a couple kids kids um, who are big sports guys that I've, you know, talked to or shown a couple cards, but never like the idea of like a card club that I know that guys like Eloy and Jamie do um, that stuff. It just yeah. wouldn't sit here. Um, yeah. It's just not, a, it's just not a lingo here. Uh, they want to go outside and shoot a deer and throw it over their shoulder and bring yeah. it down the mountain. <laughs> and that's not yeah, me. And, and, and listen, we're products of our environment, right? That's yeah. the area yeah. uh, you're in. Uh, you know, I get asked that question, uh, since I I took uh, my my new position and the I, I my my students are from ninth grade to twelfth. It's high school. Okay. And uh, all, they're big into video games. Uh, mm. I think like a lot of kids and superheroes and and so. Oh, okay. But no no one's mentioned anything cards. I I have like my logo on my backpack of the show yeah. and they they ask like, Mister Newman, you have your own podcast and I'm like yeah and I explained it to them. It's with sports cards and and no one said, Oh, I collect. So, yeah. um, but you know, I, I'm thinking I have to, I'm going to have to buy some Marvel cards or some superhero uh, cards and, and, and bring them in because cute. I mean, and some of these, uh, uh, kids like are, are artists to, to unbelievable artists. Yeah. They're drawing like superheroes freehand, like Batman and, and Spider-Man nice. and to, without looking, just, just drawing them. So, they're, and they're, that's what they talk a lot about. Like whenever the new, uh, you know, superhero movies come out, they're, they're, yeah. hey, did you see it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was great. Uh, I didn't think it was that great, you know. So I got what I got to do. It's on my list. I gotta, I gotta get some uh, superhero cards. I think that'll be right up their alley. Uh, I know they're big into the movies. I don't. I don't I'm not even sure they know those kind of cards exist. So maybe bringing them in and and handing them out, giving them out. Uh, you know, might spark some interest in cards. So uh, what, I got, I got to June. I got a little time, so I'll, I'll get it done. What were we gonna say? What never gets old with kids from kindergarten to twelfth grade is stickers. Kids yeah. always, kids always dig stickers. I don't know why it is. I've got, I've had seniors in high school. You give them a little smiley face sticker, and it's like. He gave him a, a prize. I gotta be. We gotta be careful with those. They might wind up. Who knows where? And, and that's we'll true. Be, that's true. We'll yeah. be. We'll be scraping them off. <laughs> then they'll really make me work where I'll say I'm earning. That's true. My money. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> All right. So what else do I want to talk about? Uh, you know, uh, are you going to the national? You know, actually, it's funny. I was just uh, texting uh, Tyler Murphy at Hey, It's Team Murph on Twitter today about National. Uh, so him and I have been uh, in this conversation the past six, eight months, uh, and his wife as well, um, about the possibility of going. So I, I think it's a real possibility. I got my fingers crossed. The only thing is it's my wife and I's anniversary every year right, in bet- right at National. 
Um, so she is, she's given me the thumbs up. So now it's just a logistical thing to kind of work out yeah. getting there because it's, it, you know, the hard part is it's East coast. So I got to hop a plane yeah. to get over there, but I'll yeah, figure it out. Trip. That's a trip for, for, for you. Yeah. So I, I, and you know, I got three boys, so that's really yeah. asking my wife to sign yeah. up for the, the, the gauntlet man to, to run a week yeah. without, without me while I get to go play with my card buddies. But, uh, I yeah. have high hopes that I'll be there. I would love to go. Um, even if just to see the faces that I interact with, you know, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's Merv, uh, yeah. you know, I've been, uh, yeah. Jimmy Mayhan card collector. I mean, guys I talk to all the time. I would love to meet them face to face. So yeah, that that's half, that's half the fun of, uh, yeah, of the national. All right. Let's talk about this, these wrapping skills. That, that's what I definitely <laughs> want to talk about. Uh, you're very good. You know, again, you don't need me to, to tell you that. Uh, when, when did you start? Like, when did you start, you know, rapping? How old were you? It's funny. I was just talking to my, my sixth graders about this, uh, two days ago. Um, I was writing raps in sixth grade. I mean, I remember writing raps in sixth grade in my classes. Uh, and then through middle school and the high school, I mean, if you were to find my notebooks, I had raps written all over them. Um, so I've always loved hip hop music. And I think that's just, like you said, a product of the environment. I grew up, you know, listening to Pac, listening to Big, uh, you know, listening to Dre. Uh, I had a best friend who was brothers were gangbangers. And like, we would just sit and listen to their music as fourth, fifth, sixth grade, probably not the best thing, but, uh, so hip hop is kind of ingrained in me. And then, uh, when I got in college, uh, at the, at Eastern where I went to college, they had a, a studio that was free for any students. And so I lived with a guy who was a, a big music head. And uh, so he got me in there one day and we just started playing around and recorded a few songs. And then it just kind of, the, the snowball just kind of ran where I started like learning how the programs work, learning where to get beats and really started to write with a purpose uh, with my music. And that, that was, you know, when I really got serious about my faith and the music became an avenue for me to share uh, about Christ to, you know, kids all over Washington state really. And, uh, so I started getting more serious about that. Like you said, at, uh, before we started the interview here, even made a couple albums that I could give out and get to get into kids' hands. Um, now that was in my twenties. I'm now in my thirties. So the, the music isn't as a, a, a prime focus in life just with the timing of things. Cause, uh, it takes time to record that stuff, but every now and again, my wife gives me a couple hours. I get the mic out and write a few raps about cards and the hobby and Buck City Breaks or whatever it is. So, so you were you were writing lyrics to to rap songs in, in sixth grade. Do you have all those original? Like, do you did you keep all that stuff? My mom's a hoarder. I bet my mom has it has them somewhere. But uh, <laughs> they're they're probably in a box of like all my you know middle school or high school uh, work that I did. Um, but yeah, I remember I, I wrote one rap about the, the dream team. Like I had a whole rap yeah. about the dream team. And so, uh, and then a bunch of other random things as, as I started getting into high school, probably girls and parties and stuff that yeah. kids shouldn't be into anyway, but <laughs> yeah. Well, like it's part of life though, too, right? You're exactly. rap about your experiences. What, yeah. how, when, when you, when you go to write one, whether it was then or, or, you know, even now, like how long does it take from when you start to, to, to write those out to when you're like, you know, I know every song's different, but on average, yeah. what does a song take you to, to complete lyrically? Uh, lyrically is hard because normally I just start with like, like a napkin or something and I'm just writing lines, you know, like it's not really yeah. a song. Um, so like the hobby family rap, I mean, it was just like over time, I think of a, a cool line and I just kind of write it down. And then eventually you get enough where you can kind of start piecing them together into a verse. Um, and I've always like that black and yellow song. I've always yeah. had the hobby family, hobby family. I mean, yeah. that like from the first time I even thought of the song and hobby family, that song came to my mind. Um, so the, the hooks are kind of the, the easiest part for me, I would say. Uh, you know, getting the chorus or the hooks to songs and then the lyrics themselves. I mean, they just kind of, they just kind of weave themselves over know. time. Yeah. No, that's cool. I, I just wondered that, you know, I'm I'm not that talented to, to write <laughs> songs. So 
I just wondered how, you know, you hear, you hear certain artists say like, oh, I, I did that in like an hour. And then another one will say, man, that was like a three week song. I changed it. Yeah, no, there, there's definitely like, depending on the, the meaning and the, <laughs> the depthness, depth, depthness of tracks, like, you know, some can take a short time and sometimes you just get in that groove where yeah. stuff just lines up and, and goes together. And sometimes you hit that block and you're like, I, this isn't going anywhere. So, so do you, I know you used to do shows back in the day and, 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 and stuff. And you, uh, like you said, you got the two albums. Uh, when we come down here to finish here, I, I'll have you give out where people can find that. Do you perform live any, any more? Uh, you know, I was actually just talking to uh, Jimmy Bible about this uh, on Twitter last night. Uh, man, I would say probably the strength in my in my hip hop was probably the performance. And it's just because I was just I was a personality up there. You know, I had the energy. I had the the charisma. I had the the confidence on the mic. And I don't know, John, that I got it in my legs to jump around for yeah. 30 minutes straight anymore while singing, you know, so. Um, I do not, I do not do any performances anymore. It's been probably, oh, eight or nine years since my last like concert. Um, but I still just, you know, record it or I might in class or something, do something for the kids, but nothing, nothing like I used to, man. That was, that was a heyday. That was a fun yeah. time, but that was a lifetime ago. It seems like. <laughs> I'm going to ask you, so have most of your kids heard, heard you rap? Yeah, you know, the internet's forever, you know that. And so they end up finding something on YouTube or whatever of something that I did in the past. So yeah, they all find it somehow. It it it's just it is what it is. And they they laugh about it for a week and then they're on to the next thing. So has has any of your students said, Hey, hey, teach, I can uh, I can rap better than that. Has anyone like I've I've had a couple kids that have wanted to battle. Um and I used to be <laughs> I used to be really quick uh, with uh, with lines. And so, uh, you know, I've had a couple mini battles where I get a couple oohs and ahs from the kids from the funny lines that I come up with. But uh, never, did, did never you, had a kid, kid that like seriously was like, hey, I'd, I'd like to do music. But maybe one did, day that, that would be really cool. Did you drop a mom spaghetti on him at all? I, I did. It was a little bit of an Eminem <laughs> style, man. It was, yeah. It, it definitely got the kids laughing, so... That's funny, and again, that those are those those great moments, right? That you can have, and and yeah, class oh, absolutely. And, they still so. talk. They still come back and talk to me about it. You know, <laughs> remember that time you remember that time you battled so and so, and you're like, oh yeah, I remember that. So that's funny. When a kid that that person could go home, uh, at the end, hey, I battled uh, my teacher in, in rap <laughs> today. I mean, how many kids? How many kids get to go home and say that, right? Uh, so that's very added, true. Uh, and and they learned something too besides that, like not to battle, Absolutely. not to battle Mr. K Dub at, at school. <laughs> <laughs> That's today's lesson. But uh, awesome stuff, uh, Kyle. Uh, you know, you know, keep doing uh, what you're doing. I know you will. You're, sure. you're a positive influence on many planes uh, in the hobby, in the classroom, as a dad, uh, and uh, you know, you're doing a great job. Uh, for, for those that listening. Uh, give out all, take your time, give out all the credentials, websites, where people can, can find your stuff. Oh, you do, you do a high five with, with K-Dub show that I've been watching. Yeah, uh, heck yeah. Uh, you got, I got to get on that thing. You got to. You're I, on the I, list. I'm, I got to. All right, I put me on the list. I'm back. I'm, 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 I'm begging my way on the show. Pretty, no, pretty you're sad, on but it, I'm, 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 no need but, to beg. Uh, no, I don't. I got a note card with just everybody's names on Twitter yeah. that I just keep highlighting as All I right. go through. So absolutely. When, when, whenever it's my turn, I'm ready. I'm, 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 I'm patient, uh, but we'll give out, happy. give out, give out all that stuff. So people can, can check that stuff out. You know, even, even the music side of things as well. Well, you mentioned albums, man. If anyone's got a K-Dub album, I would love to get my hands on that. Cause I don't know what happened to all mine, but. Uh, the, the music thing, I could throw out my MySpace, but I don't think people would want to go to MySpace anymore. <laughs> uh, but no, you can get at me on Twitter is kind of where I call home for social media at, at Mr. K D U B. Uh, and then I also do, uh, as John was saying, a weekly, uh, high five where I just, uh, interview people, personalities in the hobby. I ask them five questions, uh, one right after another. And that's dizzy dub one, uh, on YouTube. If you guys want to check that out, but 
that's that's really my social media right there. I, I I call Twitter home, and then I do a little bit on YouTube. But that's that's what I got. Yeah, and, and that those high that's great. Nice and quick, ten to fifteen minutes. Uh, so boom, cool. bang, you know, and uh, it's put people a little bit on the hot seat. I love it. Um, <laughs> so what are you saying? You 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 don't have your own albums at this point? I I, I mean, they're all on thumb drives or my old yeah. computer somewhere, but I don't, I don't know. I mean, like I said, maybe buried in my old Kata box somewhere in my house, yeah. but um, my wife might have an old copy, but people don't have she CDs hides. anymore. So I don't know yeah. where they all went. I know it's crazy. Yeah. It's all digital now. So yeah. So. Yeah. Well, that's a probably a rarity. I mean, if someone has it, they don't tell them that they might try to, to get I know, too man. much. <laughs> look, on, look on eBay. I bet they're on eBay. Sometimes. <laughs> Flip Kata albums on eBay. After I do this That's interview, a, they're flipping Kata albums. Yeah, we eBay. just, we just, you know, we have a, with that the old term in the hobby, right? Pump and dump. Uh, yeah, exactly. We, just, yep. uh, we didn't dump them; we pumped them, and now you, now we, gotta, it's going to cost you too much money to get your now own. I need to find out who's dumping them. That's what I need. <laughs> I need them Kata albums. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Kyle, man, I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for giving the show uh, some time. I'm, I'm yeah, sure, sure I'll talk to you. The, uh, uh, yep, uh, continue to talk to you, and, and it's uh, uh, it's a pleasure to 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 get to know you, and, and kind of share sort of the same profession. Uh, yeah, man, we, we walk uh, in the same line, brother. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I I know you enjoy it, and um, you know you you told me you I would, and and you were right, so that's awesome. That's right, man. All right. I appreciate you having me. It was a true honor. No, no problem. Thanks, thanks for coming on. Take care, man. All right, later, brother.